Okay, so today we're going to be doing a card trick to discuss conditional probability. And what I'm going to do is it's going to be a basic guess your card trick. Um, so I'm going to sh I've shuffled the deck already. It's a standard deck of cards. My helper Catherine is going to pick a card from the deck. I'm going. She's going to put it back in after showing the camera. I'm going to shuffle it and then I'm going to pick her card out of the deck. Standard deck, 52 cards. So I'm going to fan them out. Pick a card, any card, and I'm going to look away. So as not to skew the trick, please show the camera. <laughs> okay. Now, put the card back in anywhere you would like. Okay. And I have not, I have not seen anything. I did not pull the, you know, look at the card above. So I'm going to shuffle these up real quick. Okay. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to tap the deck twice, and her card will magically come to the top of the deck, and I will pick her card out of this deck of 52. So, here we go. Is this your card? No. It's not? No. Okay. I'm just going to put, here, hold this one. Is this your card? No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hang on though. <laughs> okay. Now we gotta tap three times. Is that your card? No. Hmm. Well what are the odds of that? It didn't work any of the three times. Let's find out in today's lesson. Okay, and so guessing, like in the intro, guessing the card is basic probability. But what we're going to talk about today is, what if we started to compound some events? What if we weren't just picking one card, but we were picking multiple cards? Or we wanted certain things to happen in a certain order. Okay, and so how we're going to deal with this is we're going to start to talk about rules. And the first one that we're going to talk about, and perhaps the most important one, is the product rule. Because what happens when we start to draw multiple events, if we want certain things to happen, the probability goes down, or the number, that we, the number of choices that we have gets bigger. For example, the lottery is a situation where you have a lot of different events that are separate that you need to have line up to have you know, a win in the lottery. And so the product rule can help us figure out what our probability is. So for example, Find the probability of two subsequent events, meaning events that happen back to back. So the probability of A and B is the probability of A happening given, or the probability of A times the probability of B given that A. So for example, if two cards are drawn, what's the probability that subsequent aces are drawn? Let's take these events individually. The probability of A. And event A is one ace is drawn. Okay, and B is one ace is drawn. Well, the probability that the first one happens, the probability that A happens is, <coughs> excuse me, four aces out of 52 cards because we have four aces, okay, and there's 52 in a deck. But the probability of B happening is really equal to the probability of B given that A. Because given that A happens, what's the probability of B happening? Which is really saying, if I pull out that ace, how has my probability changed? Well, now that I've pulled out one ace, I only have three aces left. But because I've pulled out one of those cards, I don't have 52 choices anymore. I really only have 51 choices. And so the probability of A and B becomes the probability of A A and B is equal to 4 out of 52, which is the probability that the first event happens, times 3 out of 52, which is the probability that the second event happens, assuming that the first event happened. 
Okay, and so what we end up with is something that's completely different. It's actually one out of 221 when we get done reducing all that. Okay, that's tough to take because now the probability goes down because one divided by 221 leaves us a low probability that that's actually going to happen. Okay, let's take another example. A box contains four red, three white, and five green let's say racquetballs or bouncy balls. Three are randomly selected. What is the probability that the first is a red, the second is a white, and the third is a green? Three subsequent events. Okay? In order to draw the first red, so we are going to say the probability there are four red ones out of a possible 12. But for the second event, we're saying assume that the first one happened. Assume that you did pull the red. Well, we don't have 12 of them in the box anymore. We only have 11 in there. And five of them, oh, I'm sorry, the second one is a white. So the second one, we are going to have 3 out of 11 times something out of 10, which is 5. Okay? So the probability of pulling that red is 4 out of 12 because there's 4 red and there's 12 in the box. Well, you take that out, there's only 11 left and 3 of them are white. So the probability of the second event is 3 out of 11. The probability of the third event is 5 out of the 10 that are left. When we get through multiplying this, we end up reducing some things and we end up with a 1 out of 22 chance that we get that done. Okay? So the probability goes down. 4 out of 12 is a 33% chance, but 1 out of 22 is more like a you know, 5% chance. So we go from a 30% chance of getting just that one red to all of these things happening in succession gives us a very low probability. So what are the probability that two white followed by one green are selected? Well, let's look. The probability of the first event happening is 3 out of 12. The probability of the second event happening is 2 out of 11. Because if we pull one of the white ones out, we only have two left, and we have one less in the box. And the probability of the third one happening would be 5 out of 10 again. Because we pulled one out, there were 11. We pulled another one out, there's 10. And when we multiply this, we get 1 out of 44. So you see how these probabilities continue to become ever-changing. Because the probability of subsequent events happening is lessened and lessened. Okay? So though we pulled three in this first example, and we pulled three in the second example, they are not the same. And so it's important that you calculate each separately. All right? I'm going to give you this one to do on your own. Okay? So three cards are, are dealt from a shuffled deck. Find the probability that a spade followed by a heart followed by a spade are dealt. Okay? So you have three events there. And then you want to find the probability that a red card, then a black, then a black. So take into consideration each of those three separate events in those two examples, okay? Let's talk about the same pair of dice. The same pair of dice is tossed twice. What's the probability of rolling a 7 followed by an 11? These are called independent events because unlike in a deck, I'm not taking out possibilities. So the probability of a 7, maybe that's hard to read, let me get green. The probability of me rolling a 7 is going to be how many ways there are out of 36? Well, there's six ways to roll it out of 36. Okay? And the probability of rolling an 11 is 2 out of 36. But because one event doesn't have bearing on the other, meaning if I roll a 7, it doesn't take out any possibilities. Just because I rolled a 7 doesn't mean there's 35 possibilities left. So rolling a 7 followed by an 11 is going to be 6 out of 36 times 2 out of 36, which is equal to, so this is going to be the probability of 7, then 11. And that's going to give me 6 over 36. Let me just reduce it. 1 out of 6 times, <laughs> keep messing up. <laughs> 1 out of 18, which gives me a 1 out of 108 chance of actually doing this. So there's less than a 1% chance that I'm going to roll a 7 
and then an 11, okay? Those are subsequent independent events because they don't have bearing on one another. So notice the denominators are the same because nothing changed. I still have 36 possibilities because I'm tossing that same pair of dice, okay? The next one, I want you to try this one. What's the probability that a head appears three times in a row on three subsequent tosses of a fair coin? Fair coin meaning equally as likely to have heads as tails. So remember how many choices you have for each and figure out what the pro probability of tossing three in a row is. Okay? Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time. Make sure you bring those examples to class. And check out this blooper reel about that card trick that we tried at the beginning. Okay? This was the first run of it. It's actually pretty funny. And it actually happened. So check it out. We'll see you next time. It's the red button. Okay, are you going to crop this part out because I'm already recording? Are you recording? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, today we're going to do a card trick to talk about um, the effects of probability and uh, the product rule. I have a standard deck of cards here, and so I'm going to perform a basic, you know, guess the card trick on my assistant here, Catherine. And so she is going to be picking a card from this deck, and I'm going to guess which one it is. Okay, so here we go. I've already shuffled the cards. We're good to go. <coughs> so pick a card, any card you'd like. Do not let me see it. Okay, show the folks at home. Okay, she's going to put the card back in the deck, and then I am going to guess her card on the first try. Okay, so put your, put your card back anywhere in the deck. I'm not going to look. Okay, I'm going to give these a shuffle. Okay. Okay, I'm going to tap the, the deck twice, and the card that her card is going to come to the very top, and I'm going to show the card, and it's going to be a big reveal. It's going to be lots of fanfare fireworks. Here we go. So here we go. All right. Is this your card? Yeah. <laughs> it is. This is your card? Yeah. It really is? Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't supposed to work. <laughs> It wasn't supposed to work. <laughs> 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 this is really yeah. hard. <laughs> that was not supposed to work. Because it was supposed to be like a, I had a 1 in 52 chance of guessing, and of course I guessed wrong. <laughs> <laughs>